No what I hate, stereotypes. Pero ¿sabes lo que odio aún más? Fitting into one. Hola mi gente, bienvenidos a Spring Spanish. Yo soy Paulísima, I am Paulísima, one of the five Spanish teachers here at the Spring Spanish YouTube channel y tu favorita, por supuesto. Stereotypes are ridiculous. There are 120 million of us Mexicans, so I'm sure there's gotta be plenty of us que nunca llegan tarde and que no le pone limón a todo. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure they are out there at just Yet to meet one. So, yeah. Los mexicanos are aware of the reputation that precedes us. But in this video, we're gonna go deeper, 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 <laughs> deeper into those things that you know, me and my fellow Mexicans are so used to that we no longer notice how weird or how strange they are to others. Esas cosas raras que contribuyen a que México sea el país más bonito del mundo. Because that's what Mexico is. Yeah, that's right. Este video es especial porque para hacerlo, I recruited the help of some amigos extranjeros to tell me about the stuff that they found weird viviendo en México. You will also learn some essential Spanish chunks that represent each of the cultural quirks that I will present. Now, I am ready to start y espero que tú también. Empecemos. The weird classic. Let's start with three Mexican classics. Número uno. Putting lime on everything. Yeah, that's right. I don't know about Mexicans, we just love lime and we just put lime on everything. And we also do ruin fruits by putting lime on them and chili powder and hot sauce. Yeah, hot sauce. Seriously, lime on everything. Número dos, not saying a direct no. Not even if it was to be no thank you. Yeah, when we are in the market buying or you know, like in a tianguis, a Mexican market, we don't say to the vendors no thank you. We say chunk alert. We say para la próxima. It's like for next time. Another example of not saying a direct no. When you offer a drink to someone, for example, like way too many Mexicans, instead of saying no, thank you, they will say something like chunk alert, ahorita, gracias. But you have, they, it's followed with like a negative gesture. Like, do you want a drink? Ahorita, gracias. Ahorita, gracias will translate as little now, thank you. Which leads us to numero tres. Ahorita, the infamous unit of time, unit of Mexican time. That can mean anything between right in the next minute to I don't think it's ever going to happen. Mismo ejemplo. ¿Quieres una cerveza? Do you want a beer? Ahorita, gracias. It's super confusing. Like, ahorita, gracias. Like, not now. Should I ask you later? Do you want the drink or you don't want the drink? We never know. I have a whole video about ahorita and its many, many meanings. Check it out right after you watch this one. As confusing as saying ahorita, gracias. This chunk of Spanish is a great chunk that you should learn if you want to sound very Mexican. It will help you in many occasions like this one. Imagínate, you're having a bowl of popcorn, you're normal, so you don't put anything on it, maybe butter or salt. And here comes your Mexican friend with this. And of course, this. ¿Qué dices? You look at your friend, you protect your bowl of popcorn and say, ahorita, gracias. You got it. Ahorita, gracias. Now, for the following section, I asked some of my foreign friends to be absolutely brutally honest about things that they noticed when living in Mexico. So I asked for brutal honesty and I promised I wouldn't be offended nor take it personally. Personally or personally? Hmm. Anyway, so if you're Mexican and are watching this video, please don't take it personal. It's all in good spirits. Now, if you're liking this video so far, I kindly suggest you to subscribe to our channel so you can get more useful, cool content and amazing Spanish chunks that will help you to be fluent in Spanish. I first asked my friend Kai Chin, who is from Malaysia, where we met, and who lived four years in my beloved Cancun. I asked her and she told me this. 
Coca-Cola, agua sagrada. This is literally what Kai Chin said. She said, Coca-Cola like sacred water. Or no, she said it in Spanish actually. Yeah, well, she has a point. It turns out that Mexicans drink on average 700 cups of Coca-Cola per year. This is almost double of what they drink in the US. And it turns out it's become a serious problem. In fact, so acute is the problem that in January 2014, the Mexican government introduced a 10% tax on every liter of sugar sweetened drinks. Yeah, that's right, a sugar tax, mi gente. I have to say that Coca-Cola has been such a big part of Mexican culture, let's say, since the 60s, that now, for me, it's impossible to think about certain Mexican foods, about eating certain Mexican foods, without immediately imagining them, but I have to pair them with una Coca-Cola bien fría. Whoops! Did you hear that? Una Coca-Cola bien fría. Bien fría. That's a great chunk to learn. You can use it to describe una Coca-Cola or una cerveza. Unos taquitos al pastor y una Coca-Cola bien fría. Uy, unas empanadas de chicharrón prensado y una Coca-Cola bien fría. That's right. Número 5. Paying 5 pesos for a public toilet. If you're traveling through Mexico, if you're road tripping, perhaps you are going to need a lot of this. So you're gonna need them to pay for your access to a public toilet. And in that public toilet, there will be no toilet paper in the individual stalls. So make sure you grab the piece of toilet paper <laughs> that the person, usually a woman or a child, well, it doesn't matter. You're gonna pay five pesos, they're going to give you toilet paper. <laughs> it's very weird. The following chunk might come useful if they're being stingy with the toilet paper. You can ask them. You can always say, ¿Me das un poco más, por favor? That's right. Because way too many gas stations in Mexico don't offer a free toilet. So you have to pay there too. That sucks. However, Mexican gas stations do offer some other perks, like the following one. Número 6. Not pumping your own gas. Well, in Mexico, we have filling station attendants who, for a customary tip, will not only fill your tank, but will also clean your windshield and check tire pressure. All of this without you having to get off your car. Isn't that a good deal? Cinco estrellas. Excelente servicio. Then I ask Robert, who's been living in Mexico for three years and speaks great Spanish, what struck him the most about Mexico? He lives in Mexico City and this is what he told me. Public displays of affection. You see, wherever Hollywood wants you to believe, Mexico doesn't live in a constant party or in a permanent state of chaos. It's not chaos, it's chaos. And actually we do live in a semi semi-permanent state of chaos but okay it's not what you might think all right so actually as a as a society we're pretty conservative that's why it's for strangers it's quite shocking when they are like let's say in a park where it's forbidden to drink a beer don't you dare to open a beer or to have a glass of wine in your picnic don't do that but it's okay if you are like with your significant other. You'll see that a lot, like. <laughs> it's true, yeah. So yeah, in a park in Mexico, drinking, mm -mm. no, 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 don't do it. Being all over each other with your boyfriend or girlfriend, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I don't know what to say. Las demostraciones públicas de afecto are muy comunes en México. I don't know, we like kissing? Vendors never having change. And I'm not only talking about stalls or street food vendors. This happens everywhere with taxi drivers or, you know, proper establishment. Seriously, it's like the last time this happened to me, it, well, it was a pharmacy, but it, it's all right. I'll tell you a story in another time. If you are in a small establishment, if you are like buying street food, or let's say you're going to take a taxi and you're going to pay with a, I don't know, maybe a 200 or a 500 pesos bill, you might find it very useful to learn the following. Chunk alert! Si tendrá cambio de, si tendrá cambio de, and that's where you insert the kind of bill that you're going to use to pay. So you could say, for example, si tendrá cambio de 200, 
si tendrá cambio de 100 o you know maybe you don't know the numbers you just have to show the, the bill and say si tendrá cambio de si tendrá cambio de That's it. I actually wrote this example um, and in my imagination, I was going to use a 500 pesos bill, but then I realized I'm a millennial and those kind of bills don't abound in my wallet. So yeah, I had to use a 200 and a 100. <laughs> Muy bien. Now you are aware of very important cultural quirks about Mexico and you have learned the chunks, the Spanish chunks that you need to face them. Let me know in the comments if these are things that you have noticed in Mexico or maybe this is something that it's very similar to some habits or quirks of your own country let me know in the comments i'm dying to know okay i want to tell you the story about the last time i went to a proper establishment and they didn't have change it was horrible because i was in a hotel and i thought i forgot to bring my toothbrush okay i forgot to bring my toothbrush i'm the kind of person that forgets to bring the toothbrush yeah that's me anyway so but you know like it, it's a, a thing that is very easy to buy and i I, there was an OXO, a, a Mexican convenience store next to the hotel, and I saw it in the in the OXO. But guess what? Because of a certain event that is happening everywhere in the world, where we have to stay in our houses and don't leave ever, and you know, because of that, the the opening times of the OXO had changed. So, but then I was like super happy because next to it there was a pharmacy, so I went to the pharmacy, and that was the only time in my life where I had a 500 pesos bill. I I said that I never had them, but I do when you go to the ATM, you know. Anyway, so I had a 500 pesos uh, bill and I tried to pay with it and they were like, ay, no tenemos cambio. It was 8.30 at night. And I know it doesn't sound like it was very late, but everything was closed because of, you know, and I couldn't buy a toothbrush. They, I couldn't buy a toothbrush. I didn't have my card. I only have 500 pesos. So I ended up wrapping my finger in a piece of the towel. My own towel, by the way. I, I brought a small one. And I put um, toothpaste on it. And I don't know. What do you do when you don't have a toothbrush and you know, you're not a pig? So you wanna clean your mouth before sleeping? What do you do? Let me know. And because you know, you stayed until the end, I'm pretty sure not a lot of people will hear about the story of me like improvising, me and my improvised toothbrush. <laughs> So let's play a little game and let me know in the comments what you do when, uh, you know, ha what, like, what's your MacGyver way of improvising a toothbrush? I want to know that. All right. So now you know a lot about weird things about Mexico. And wouldn't it be nice to also know about weird things that we eat other than, you know, putting lemon and hot sauce on everything? <laughs> well, that's great because I have the perfect video for you. Right after watching this, go watch this video that I made about the most um, common Mexican food that you can uh, find, but I included some really weird stuff in it. So, uh, uh, and in that video, I also teach you how to make a typical Mexican drink. Hint, it's a beer cocktail. All right, I will see you there. This was Paulissima, y fue un placer estar con ustedes. Hasta la próxima.